Hey, snackers. Join us for the next episode of DevNet Snack Minute, where we talk about how to use GitLab to implement your CI CD pipeline. Hello, snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Hey, everyone. Uh, Matt Napoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 20 of DevNet Snack Minute. If this is your first time joining us, Snack Minutes is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, where we learn about APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff that we think you might like to know. And the cool stuff that we are talking to you about today is GitLab and how you get started with building out your CI CD pipeline. Matt, why don't you kick it off for us? Uh, thanks, Kareem. Um, so recently, I've been uh, working on some DevOps tools, some demos, and things like that. And I realized that in Snack Minutes, we talk a lot about DevOps and CI CD pipelines, but we haven't actually really walked through a demonstration of one. And I thought that that might be helpful um, with some particular tools, actually specifically GitLab, that I've been working with recently. That's that's cool, Matt. Uh, before we dive in, just just give us a quick kind of explain it to me like I'm five. What is CI CD? And what is what is GitLab? And just give us a, a quick intro. Okay, so um, you'll hear CI/CD used a lot when talking about DevOps practices. Um, CI stands for continuous integration, and CD stands for either continuous delivery or continuous deployment, depending on uh, what your organization's using. And what that really boils down to is um, updating code or updating configurations for networks, uh, which is what we're going to see here being able to push them to a Git repository, and then having a process kickoff that will either run tests uh, for us to make sure our code is going to work as we expect it to, build out particular portions of the code. So maybe you're going through a process of building out a microservice in a Docker container. Um, you can add that as part of the process. And then ultimately, we're deploying our either code or changes um, to our infrastructure or to our configurations as then part of that end process. So that's uh, what we're talking about then is really um, build, test, and then deploy would be our, our stages of it, the environment there. And there's a tool that kind of puts those things all together, which is GitLab, which is what we're going to demonstrate today. It provides us with a Git repository that we can push our code to and, and collaborate against. It provides us a runtime environment uh, through their runners. Uh, that allow us to actually either test the code or deploy whatever code we need to to run, um, and uh, allows allows us to to manage all of that CI/CD pipeline in one place. So that's why we're we're working with that today. Sweet. All right. Let's uh, let's look at it. And I and I see you're using Meraki. Um, for, uh, yeah, for that. I'm using Meraki. Per, per usual. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what we're looking at right now is the concept of. Um, updating our configuration in Meraki to set up VLANs uh, for our particular site. And so that's, we're going to be running code that's in this network VLAN update folder. And just, you know, so we can see where we're getting started from here. I'm working with a network called DevNet Lab 2, and there's only one VLAN currently set up. And so that's what we're going to then change as, our, as far as our configuration is concerned for this demo. Okay. Now, the, the most important file that's part of GitLab is this gitlabci.yaml. And we'll actually look at that in the IDE uh, because it's a little bit easier to see. But I mentioned those steps of build, test, and deploy. And those are the stages that I'm defining as part of what I'm going to run through my CI CD pipeline. This is the pipeline right here. We're going to set up some precursors to actually running the script, making sure we're in the right directory, installing the right Python. Uh, dependencies and then setting our API keys. Now, the interesting part of this file is the first two bits here are going to be the tests that we're going to run. The first one's going to be a, a check of our configuration to make sure that it meets the needs of what we're going to be pushing out. So it's actually going to run this check Meraki config.py file, but it's only going to do that if I'm working a branch that's not the main branch. And so that's why we have this accept master there. Similarly, we're going to run one more test called check network device existence that's going to do uh, the same kind of thing as we saw with the config, but now it's just going to make sure that the network that we're asking to create VLANs against actually exists within Meraki. I'm actually going to remove that portion and make sure that we run that right away. And so it'll check to make sure that those networks exist. 
And then, and then finally, we'll do a deploy, but it'll only happen if we check in code into our master branch. So we're going to run our tests first, make sure everything passes, and then we're going to actually do our deployment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new branch. And for those who are not familiar with Git commands and Git in, in general, go check out DevNet Start Now at developer.cisco.com slash start now, where we walk you through all of that. So now you're essentially going and moving and creating a new branch and moving to that new branch, which you're calling it test run. Correct. I'm creating a new branch. I called it test run too. Uh, and then we're going to add any changed files to that. And so we want to make sure that our config is set appropriately. Um, I know that I don't have an add in my lab uh, name for our network. So we're going to actually change that to our DevNet lab two that we saw in Meraki. Then we also have the VLAN subnet that we're creating and then the number of VLANs. We're going to create 10 new VLANs on top of the, the one that already exists. So once we set up our files, uh, we'll add those to that branch. We'll do our commit. And this is, this is your, essentially your test process. The very first process that you're, that you mentioned while we were looking at the ammo file, right? Well, it'll do the build for us and then the test, but it won't actually do the deploy. And so that's where we have some control over what will happen when we uh, push this code up. So now that I've pushed the, the branch up to GitLab, we'll actually see that CICD pipeline get triggered in our pipeline section here. And so we see that test running. We can go in there and we can actually watch it run. The config uh, actually worked out well that, that ran our build job to make sure that our configuration was correct. And right now it's checking for network existence. So we can actually go there and see what's going on there. Now, uh, we don't see anything actually happening yet because what GitLab does when it runs your code is it actually creates a, a Docker or a, a Docker container that it runs everything in. And so you don't have to worry about their runtime environment. They manage it all for you through the runner. Um, so that's kind of a cool portion to this because that runner's sitting there just waiting for that new code to be pushed and then it creates the container for you on the fly. Um, and then it actually runs the code based on that GitLab YAML file that we looked at earlier. And so now it's running, it's making a bunch of API calls. It's looking for our network DevNet Lab too. So that's what it's, that's what it's running through. Um, it ran our test. We actually see in the comments here that it found our lab. So now we know the config's correct. We know our lab exists or our, our network exists. Now we can actually push the deployment and we can do that within GitLab, we don't have to go anywhere else. And so if we head to our pipelines here, we can see what the actual branch was that we worked from. We can head to that. And then we can actually do a merge request against this particular branch and merge that into our main. And that will trigger the deployment. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. So it'll trigger our deployment. It'll trigger that last section of the GitLab YAML file and do our actual creation of our, our VLANs here. And you're doing the exact same thing, Matt, you would have you would have been doing in, in the terminal, right? You just chose to do it from within GitLab itself, but essentially you can yeah. go Git merge and it will trigger the exact same flow. Exactly, so if I had done this in the IDE, you know, of course I have to make sure everything's in sync with my local repo to the GitLab repo, but um, right. you know, it's a little bit easier to do it in the GUI sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and, and it looks fun. Yeah, so then uh, it's prettier. And so we have our pipeline running now that's gonna do our deployment. And if we click in there, it's actually going to go through a similar process that we did with the test. It's gonna look for our network and then it's gonna create our VLANs. So just like before creating that Docker image and then it'll run our code for us. And then once that's done, we should see our VLANs um, show up in, in this page. So let's let's wait for that to occur. Uh, it's going through finding our network. We actually see the API calls being generated. Um, and job succeeded. Fantastic. Now, fingers crossed, Sweet. everything worked appropriately. We'll reload our page. And now I have uh, 10, 10 new VLANs created um, based on the setting that I put in there. And if I ever needed to make any changes or I wanted to replicate this across many networks, I can do that through my pipeline and mm -hmm. either add in or change, you know, 
just that CSV file, frankly, uh, to, to do that update. Uh, this is some powerful stuff, Matt. And what's cool about this too is we're not limited to just VLANs, right? Because we have those APIs into the Meraki network. VLAN is just basic a basic example that we're showcasing how to do this, but we can essentially kind of build on top of this and configure our entire infrastructure using that process that you just have. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be REST APIs. It doesn't have to be Python. It can be, you know, it could be Terraform, um, Terraform, definitions, it can be Ansible playbooks, you know, anything that, that we can run, um, mm -hmm. you know, we can go through and use GitLab as kind of our, our de facto uh, CI CD pipeline management platform. This is awesome. So Matt, tell us a little bit before we close out here, how easy was it to get started with GitLab? And if I'm looking to duplicate this in my own environment, how do I go about doing that? Yeah, it wasn't too hard at all. Um, it actually is just a couple of containers with a Docker Compose file set up against it. Uh, and we have um, a write up on this exact demo and how to use it. And the code will be in code exchange for you to go and check out. And you should be able to just change a couple of IP addresses based on the, uh, based on the configuration and you should be good to go. Impressive, Matt. This is, uh, Thanks, man. this is awesome. Thank you for showing us and thank you um, for taking the time to just putting put, putting this all together for us. Um, Snackers, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I appreciate your time and see you uh, next week uh, on our new episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Thanks, Frank.